I have kind of a headache today. Nevertheless, the show must go on, right? What's going on, everybody? It's Mr. Mark Levitz here again to bring you another lecture video. Today, we are talking about sound effects. We are still in our unit on sound. This is lesson three, so let's get into it. What are sound effects? As if you didn't know already. Well, these are the sounds that are used to give the audience a realistic sense of the action and the setting. So let's go back to that clip from when Harry met Sally and just listen to all the sound effects in the background. The people talking, the utensils being used, the glasses being picked up and set down on the table. It's all there to make the experience more realistic for the viewer. But of course, there are other ways to incorporate sound effects into your story as well. So what are some ways that we can incorporate sounds into the story? Well, first, sound effects can tell us a lot about a character. Let's say you have a, a, a teenage character sitting in a class and, uh, and all of a sudden they... Ugh. All right. That yawning sound effect tells us something about that character. They're bored. Or let's say you have a character sitting in a doctor's office and they're, you know, that nail biting sound effect tells us uh, maybe they're feeling a little bit anxious. Okay. So certainly these very specific sound effects can tell us a lot about the character. They can also cue a character's arrival. Let's take a look at this example from the film Jurassic Park. In the scene, we have the children of the film trapped inside this car, and at the moment, there's nothing too dangerous about the situation. Yeah, the car has stopped working. Yeah, we know they're parked outside of the Tyrannosaurus paddock, but there's no dinosaurs yet, okay? And then all of a sudden, and those ripples in the water, those distant footsteps, cue the audience that a character is coming, and and it's not going to be good, <laughs> right? There's a, there's a dinosaur coming, all right? And he's, uh, he's hungry for children, all right? And in this clip, Spielberg and his team are doing a great job at creating suspense, okay? You can't just go from nothing, nothing, nothing to dinosaurs because that's, I don't know, it's just sort of cheap, okay? You want to build that suspense. You want to create that tension. You want the audience to, to feel like they're on the edge of their seats, right? And cueing an audience in this very specific way by using these footsteps is, is really making the audience think whether or not it was a good idea to go to the show this afternoon, okay? Of course, just because you're using a sound effect to cue the audience to the arrival of a character doesn't necessarily mean that you're creating suspense, okay? Um, let's say you have an example where you hear a motorcycle in the background and then all of a sudden we see somebody drive by on a motorcycle. Well, that initial sound of the motorcycle is cueing the audience that, hey, a person on a motorcycle is about to show up, but it's not necessarily creating suspense, not at least in the same way as the Tyrannosaurus Rex example, whatever. Anyway, you can also use sound effects to create perspective. Like I said in the definition, you're trying to give the audience a realistic sense of the film's action and setting. So let's take a look at this example from No Country for Old Men. Notice how when the Llewellyn character is far away from the camera, his footsteps are very quiet, but then as he comes closer to the camera, his footsteps get louder and louder and louder. That's just how sound works, okay? Imagine, you know, you're standing outside and you see somebody performing some sort of loud action far away. Well, that volume isn't going to sound as loud as if they were performing that same action right next to you, okay? So by doing this, the filmmakers are really trying to 
help create this realistic sense of setting. They want the audience to feel like they're present in the movie and using sound in order to create that unique perspective is something that filmmakers do to help put you in the film. You can also use sound effects to build tension. Let's take a look at this example from Eraserhead. This is a film about a very difficult transition for most people, becoming a parent for the first time. And throughout the film, the main character is just constantly bombarded with these industrial sounds. And even if you're not conscious of it, it's, it's present throughout almost the entire film. It sort of feels like a, like a teapot boiling over. And uh, yeah, it can really create suspense. It can create this sense of dread, this sense of anxiety uh, throughout the film. And, and, and David Lynch, is, is the best at that, okay? Two other examples from films that use sound effects very effectively to create this, you know, sort of anxious feeling in the audience is uh, Punch Drunk Love by Paul Thomas Anderson. Anytime there's a phone ringing in that film, I just go, oh God, not another phone, huh? But again, that's by design, okay? He wants you to feel that anxiety. He wants you to feel the same way that the character does, okay? Another example is from 1960. There's this French horror film called Eyes Without a Face. And throughout the film, there's just these barking dogs that you hear in the background. And again, every time I watch that film, I'm just like, I am one barking dog away from having a panic attack right now. I can't take any more of this, okay? And you're probably wondering, why would a filmmaker ever do this to their audience? And I, I don't know. <laughs> but I love those films nonetheless. But yeah, they kind of make me feel, nah, I just want this to be over. <laughs> but great films, okay? Um, so now that you know how to incorporate sounds into your story, how do we record those sounds? Well, you know, for the most part, you would record sound effects the same way that you record dialogue. And if you need a refresher on how to record dialogue, just go back to my previous lecture video. But, you know, you can use archival libraries. There are a ton of sound effects libraries available online where you can search whatever sound you're looking for and purchase it, right? Purchase the sound effect like a, like a good filmmaker does. Or you can create your own sound effects using a technique called Foley. So what is Foley? Well, Foley is a sound effect technique that was invented by a sound engineer in the early days of cinema where you are using tools to replicate sounds for films. And I'm sure Foley is a thankless job. It's one of those jobs that people only notice when you're doing it wrong. But uh, I think it seems like a lot of fun and, and it seems really creative. Like, let's say you need ice cubes in a glass. So you get out your glass and you get out your ice cubes and you drop them in and you go, eh, I don't know, that didn't sound very good. What else do we have? Well, we have this ceramic mug and this block of wood. Let's try that, okay? Uh, ice cubes in glass in three, two, one. Ooh. That was good. Let's use that, okay? I don't know, I think it's cool. And uh, yeah, my hat goes off to you, Foley artists. I, uh, I respect what you do. Speaking of Foley, let's talk about your lab assignment for this week. This week you are going to record sound effects and place them into the video that you recorded the dialogue for last week. Remember last week I gave you those five scenes, you picked one, you did the ADR and replaced all the dialogue, well, now you're gonna go back, watch those scenes again, and recreate the sound effects using the art of Foley. Or you can use an archival library. I don't care, okay? I just want you to work on putting the sound effects into those original clips. And then this week, guys, we are going to watch Jurassic Park from 1993. Now, I know that this is a film that probably most of you have already seen, but it's an important film for me. This was the movie that really made me want to be a filmmaker. I was nine years old when this film came out. I saw it four times that summer. That's still a record for me. And uh, I mean, 
all of my friends that are sort of the same age as me, uh, this was our film. This was our Star Wars. Uh, I know a lot of us had, there was a book. It was called The Making of Jurassic Park. And I certainly had it as a kid. I know a lot of people that did. And yeah, that was, you know, a pivotal film for me growing up. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it, I'm excited to share it with you. And also, you know, connecting it to sound effects, think about it. We don't know what dinosaurs sounded like, okay? And that's certainly a, a, a tall order for Steven Spielberg and, again, his team, because they have to create these, you know, prehistoric sounds that nobody has ever heard using resources from today and hopefully do their job well enough that the audience doesn't question it, right? Is that what a dinosaur sounds like? I don't know, who cares, you know? <laughs> Keep in mind, they're probably wrong, okay? But is anyone gonna question it if they did their job correctly? Okay, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you had some fun. Email me if you have any questions or talk to me in class. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye.